Here at Fort Benning, Georgia, we're talking to the members of the U.S. Army Marksmanship Unit who are on their way to London for the Olympics. This is Sergeant Vincent Hancock. Good to talk to you again, sir. Yes, sir. Good to talk to you as well. Remind us what your sport is. Uh, I'm a skeet shooter, international skeet shooter. Tell our listeners or viewers who don't know the difference between uh, trap and skeet. Skeet, it comes out of a high house and a low house, and it crosses at a central point. In trap, it starts out in a bunker about 16 meters in front of you and goes straight away. Are you good at both? Uh, I can hold my own in both, but uh, you know I'm a specialized person. I shoot skeet every day of the week, so and that's really what I'm good at. And that's what that's my passion. What you know, there was a point in your life where you had to pick one or the other. Uh, what what made you pick skeet? Really, my dad. Uh, my dad is has been a competitive shooter since uh, I can remember. So I've been around shotgun shooting uh, my whole life, and he he was a trap shooter to begin with, but he liked skeet and the sporting clay, so he started me off there. And that's just that's be, that became my passion. I started in the sporting clays, and then once I found out that I could go to the Olympics in international skeet, came out, tried it, fell in love with it, and been doing it ever since. What's it like to be part of a unit that sends so many people to the Olympics? I mean, the Olympics, of course, is the best of the best, and the the U.S. Army Marksmanship Unit is the best of the best too. So when you combine the two, it's I mean, the the, the skill level required that you guys that you guys possess is just amazing. Uh, being a member of the United States Army Marksmanship Unit is, is a great honor. I've been here since I was 17 years old, and uh, being able to be a part of this organization, be a member of the, of the, the elite group of, of athletes that have gone to the Olympics since 1960, and be a, an even smaller member of the, uh, or being a member of even the smaller group of the, of the medalists that have come from here. We've had 23 Olympic medals since 1960, so being able to know that you're a part of that, that membership, that you know, that fraternity of, of men that have competed in the Olympics, it's just a great honor to know that you can be a part of that and to, to help showcase the soldiering skills that I've learned over the years that I've been here and show the American people that uh, we as military personnel can also go compete on a high level like the Olympics. Now, you're a past Olympian yourself. What, uh, what was that experience like, and how has that helped you with what's going to happen in London uh, coming up? Uh, being able to, to have been at the Beijing Olympics and having won a medal there has really helped me to, to know what's what's coming, you know, what, what to expect in the next Olympics because the Olympics are unlike anything else you've, you'll ever go to in your life. I mean, there's such an energy, there's such a passion for sport there that you're surrounded by the best of the best. And knowing that and knowing that you've got a feeling that at any time any of these athletes that you're passing are going to win a medal and that you have the opportunity to win a medal and be on this grandest stage uh, that you'll ever be in an entire life, knowing that almost 6 billion people are going to be watching the Olympics, <laughs> it's just a surreal feeling. It's a humbling experience. When they do the opening ceremonies and they do the Parade of Nations around, were you part of that? I was, and that, that's one of the biggest thing. One of my favorite stories to tell people is when we were walking through the tunnel and you, we were getting ready to go through, I was about halfway back in the pack, and then all of a sudden, when our flag, when the, when the light hit our flag and it just burst into colors, the stadium went crazy. And that is my, that is my favorite experience from the Olympics, even over winning the medal and, and hearing the national anthem, knowing that I'm representing our nation, just the finest of the finest of the athletes that get to represent our United States of America. Being a part of that team is unlike any other. It's funny you say that. Like, even in Beijing, the, the entire stadium just was chanting USA, USA. Absolutely. And, you know, hearing that USA and knowing that I'm representing the United States Army and that my brothers in arms, knowing that they're watching from overseas, from Afghanistan, from Iraq, and from here in the States, wherever they may be, I'm representing them and they know that I'm there, that an American soldier is being able to show the rest of the world what we're capable of. Does that put an additional burden on yourself? I don't look at it as a burden. I look at it as an opportunity to, to show off what I've learned and what the United States Army, Army and military as a whole is capable of. And we are so much more than just soldiers out there fighting on the ground or, or driving trucks, whatever it may be that we do. We're so much more than that. We are the best of the best of the American people. We have put ourselves in, in the front lines. We've put ourselves in to be at the f forefront of saving American lives, saving former, our foreign lives, and just helping the world know that we're there to help them. What do you expect when you get to London? Um, if, if you had to prognosticate, is there a number of medals? Is there a quota that you guys want to hit? I mean, what is your personal goal? Uh, you know, my personal goal is to help support all the athletes that are going there, you know, whether that be in my sport or any other sport. If they need, if they need something, then I want to be there for them. And, of course, I want to go back and I want to win another gold medal. And that is my personal ultimate goal is to go back there and do it again. 
and I want to keep going back and doing it again and again. But yeah, you know, I'll just take it as a grain of salt. I, I've I've prayed about it. My my wife and I have have thought about it a lot, talked about it a lot, and we we feel confident that I'm going to go over there. I'm shooting the best I have in in years since I can remember. Just going over there, I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to enjoy the experience and go back over there with a gold gold mind mentality. It does seem um, that you have to go over there and enjoy it and, and soak it in and have fun with it too and not put so much pressure on yourself. That, that would seem to be the goal. Yeah, I mean, I, and I'm one of the first events to go out. I shoot the 30th and 31st of July, so within the first four days of the Olympics, our opening ceremonies. So I'll be able to get to experience, unlike the last time where I was at the end of the Olympics and I had to watch all of my friends get their medals and I was one of the last guys to get a medal so knowing that I have to wait still was just killing me I mean, it was eating me inside and out and this time I'll be able to go there get my get my job done get my medal and be able to support all the rest of the guys and just be happy about it just enjoy myself I'm bringing my wife and my youngest daughter there so they can experience some of it too